Welcome to our online worship. What a joy it is to have you here with us today. Yet before we begin, I would like to have a word of prayer. Why? Is because sometimes as we come to worship, there's other things that are in our hearts and minds. Uh, maybe things which might hinder us from hearing what God would have to speak to us. Maybe there's unrest in your own family. Maybe there's concerns in your community. Indeed, as we look in our world and in our nation, there's a lot of unrest. But as we come before God, we pray for peace. Peace so that we may be better able to hear what he has to say to us, be built up, so that as we go forth into this world, we may live as his beloved children. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today acknowledging that we live in a world where there is unrest, where there is anger, where there is hatred, and at times those things seep into our lives as well. As we come to worship you, we pray that you would be working in our hearts, that you would be refreshing us, and that you would ultimately then enable us to live as your people so that those whom we come in contact with truly may be blessed. And so now we ask that you would bless us during this time of worship. In your son's name we pray. Amen. continue with our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown his mercy to us. Ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The Lord gives strength to his people the Lord blesses his people with peace. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown his mercy to us. 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. His wisdom and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the people. Of God and join in the hymn. 
love all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O Almighty God, creator of all that is seen and unseen, you formed us in your own image when you created us. When we had lost your image because of our sin, you made it available to us again in the person of your Son. Enlighten us with your Spirit, that we may hear your voice this day and receive the restoration of life won for us on the cross. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Good morning, Trinity family, and welcome to the today's children's message. Today, I'd like to invite you to join me by having a Bible at hand as well as a few, some materials to do a science experiment as we think about today's message. Here is your short list for what you need. In your Bibles, you can turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And for the science experiment, you'll need a plate or a shallow dish. Into that plate or dish, put a thin layer of milk. You'll need food coloring, Q-tips, and a small cup with about a teaspoon of dish soap and a tablespoon of water. All right, so now we're on to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Please read with me. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So kids, there's some interesting things in that verse as we think of you've been created by God with your own unique interests, talents, and good works that he prepared in advance for you to do. So I'm curious to see as we do this experiment, I want you to think about ways that God gives you ideas and you can give him the glory for ideas that he gives you that of ways that you can reach out and help in your communities, uh, with your neighbors, in your families, and we'll just see what God has prepared in his workmanship. All right, on to step two, get your plates ready. Hey folks, now we're on to the fun part. How, what ideas did God, does God put in our hearts to help others this week, to think of others, to be a part of our communities? Let's see. I am thinking of my Sunday school class right now. I wonder if it's reaching out to a classmate. Or helping clear the table. Or could it be giving a card, a drawing to a neighbor? So those are ideas that God put on our heart. Now what is he going to do with them? We don't know the end result. Where those ideas will go. I'm grabbing my Q-tip. After I did those food coloring drops in the milk, I'm putting my Q-tip into my dish soap. Stirring that dish soap around so it gets it on there. And now I'm going to touch it to the milk. Whoa, what's God doing with that? We just don't know where it'll go. Pretty cool. He's the master artist. What is he going to do in your lives, everybody? And in this time. So you guys can have fun playing with that with your parents. Teach your siblings. And God's blessings on your week this week, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. I don't know when you're going to be watching this. 
or good evening, whenever it is, I want you to know how much we miss worshiping with you in church. But in between times, before we can get back together again, I think we should sing a couple songs. And the first one, um, this we sang long ago, but it's easy, it's familiar. Um, love, 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 something we're talking a lot about in today's service. Love, that's what it's all about, because God loves us, we love each other, mother, Father, sister, brother, everybody sing and shout, because that's what it's all about. And then we're going to sing joy, 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 and peace, peace, peace. Something that all of us long for in our lives. We long to have that love, that joy, that peace. So let's sing this together. Here we go. Love, love, love. That's what it's all about. Cause God loves us, we love each other. Mother, father, sister, brother. Everybody sing and shout. Cause that's what it's all about. It's about love, love, love. It's about love, love, love. Joy. singing that song with me. One more quick song. Um, do you remember Cast Your Burdens Onto Jesus For He Cares For You? During this time, boy, this, boys and girls, this is the time to cast our burdens onto Jesus. All that stuff that we hold on our shoulders and think, oh, tough, tough, tough stuff. But he invites us, cast your burdens onto him for he cares for us. And then higher, 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 higher. Who are we going to lift higher? Jesus. And who are we going to stomp because he tries to make us miserable? That is Satan. So stomp Satan lower. Here we go. Cast your burdens onto Jesus for he cares for you. Cast your burdens onto Jesus for he cares for you. Higher, higher, higher. Higher, 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 lift Jesus higher, lower, 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 stop Satan, lower. One more time. Cast your burdens onto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burdens onto Jesus, for he cares for you. job. And until we meet again, you take care of each other. And I'm going to encourage you today, say I love you to all the people in your home. You take care. We will see you soon. For the Old Testament lesson today, we have selected verses from the first and second chapter of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, 
and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work and that he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson comes from the 13th chapter of 2 Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the 28th chapter of St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. On this Trinity Sunday, we acknowledge that the God that we worship, the God who has saved us, is one God and three persons. And we confess this faith as it is uh, declared in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Oh, 
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message comes from the last chapter of 2 Corinthians. Paul ends this uh, letter with a phrase which is so familiar and so appropriate for us on this Trinity Sunday. He writes, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. But today, as, as we look at that letter, I would like to focus on some, uh, a verse that he spoke just right before that, where he writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice! Aim for restoration. Comfort or encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. I thought that these words were very appropriate for us today, considering what has been happening in our country. As you know, there have been neighborhoods as well as cities that have been rocked. Uh, there have been, of course, peaceful protests, and that's what we pray for. Uh, but what has probably caught our eye more so has been the mayhem. You know, the riots, the looting, the, the senseless destruction of property. But far worse than that has been the injury which has happened to people. You know, beginning with the death of, of someone in police custody to all the injury and, and actually, unfortunately, death that has happened since then. And I don't know about you, but I am just appalled to see what is happening in our world. And I'm sure you are disgusted in it as well. And yet, in the midst of this broken world, God has something for you and for me to hear and to strive for. St. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians something which I think is appropriate for us. And as we look at this passage, it's important. It's speaking to you and to me. It's not speaking about, oh, what others should do or maybe what those people should not be doing. God speaks to you and me, and he says, you Rejoice. You aim for restoration. You live in peace. These are imperatives, what God has commanded us to do. And as we look at these, these words, you know, one which caught my eye, or at least several that caught my eye, were this. Aim for restoration. And as I thought about that, actually, I started to think about a game that I played when I was growing up, and it is basketball. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I played it when I was younger, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now, in basketball, there is a, there's a goal in this game, and the aim, of course, is to get this basketball through the hoop, through the net. That is your goal. As you play the game, it is not to take this ball and throw it at the coach. You're not to take this ball and, and throw it at the referee. You're not to take this ball and launch it 
into the, the stands where, where the people watching the game are. No, the goal is to get this ball through the hoop, through the net, and score points. And of course, the team with uh, the most points uh, wins. You know, all of the dribbling of the basketball, all of the tossing of it back and forth is done with the goal of what? Getting this ball through the net. As we gather here today as Christians, the simple question is, what is our mission? What has God called us to do? As we look at the gospel lesson for today, Jesus speaks these words, his great commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But he also says these words, and teach them to observe or keep everything that I have commanded you. Or in other words, we are not only to, to bring people into the church, in, in, to faith in Jesus Christ, but, but we are to help them, as well as we ourselves, are to mature as Christians and, and grow in our faith. And what does that entail? What are some of the things that we are to do? Well, these are some things which St. Paul uh, addresses at the end of his letter as he speaks about aim for restoration. I think about that. Aim for restoration and live in peace. St. Paul wrote these words because they were needed. The first Christians in Corinth, they were Christians which truly were blessed. St. Paul, as he writes, he says, you know, there's not a spiritual gift that you lack. You know, you guys are, are doing some wonderful things. And as he writes 2 Corinthians, he's encouraged them to continue to take up a collection for other Christians in Judea to help them who are in need. You know, the Christians were doing some, some great things. But as we look at what was happening in that, that congregation, happening in Corinth among the Christians, there were also things which were seeking to tear them apart from being a family of God. First of all, there were divisions. You know, there are people saying, I follow Peter, I follow Paul, I follow Christ, I follow Apollos. And you had some, uh, what St. Paul writes, some super apostles coming in and, and trying to, to boss the people around and tell them what they should or should not do. But the things which were pulling the congregation apart were even further. Um, there were Christians which were taking other Christians to court. And St. Paul was throwing up his hands and saying, what in the world is going on? You, you know, you're, you're pulling yourselves apart. He spoke about how there was reprehensible behavior happening and uh, the people were tolerating it. He spoke about how it, uh, people came together for worship. At times they were getting drunk. And he said, you know, eat and drink at home when you come to worship, it's, it's something completely different. Again, there were good things happening at Corinth, but there were things which were tearing the people apart. And I think that's true of any community, of any state, and even of the country. As you look at the United States, I have to say there still are so many good things which are happening in our country. But what catches our eyes, of course, are, are the things which seem to be, be tearing it apart. But today, Instead of, again, speaking about other people or other cities or other communities, I would like us to think about ourselves, our earthly families, our church family, and then, to a greater extent, our community. God encourages us to aim for restoration, to which I may say, how are things going in, in your family? Are things peachy keen as sometimes people say, or at times is there what you may say tension between spouses, between parents and children, between grandparents and grandchildren, between brothers and sisters. You know, I come from a large family. Boy, there's a lot of uh, opinions which are expressed, and uh, it's not always easy to live as, as a family. It truly is not. And we might say the same thing with regards to a church family. You know, we come together and we are connected because of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In him, we are brothers and sisters, and yet it's not always so easy to do. Why? Because at times there's things that we have done which have hurt other people, and maybe it's the words that we have spoken. In fact, I would like to talk to you 
specifically about a, a particular word which um, um, you are familiar with, and it's something which I actually do in my life. It, we talk about uh, sarcasm uh, and being sarcastic. And I am guilty at times of doing this. Ask my wife more than I, I care to admit. Yet it's interesting where that word comes from. The word sarcasm comes from the, the Greek word sarx, which means flesh. And uh, it, what you have pictured in there is, I want you to picture like a wild dog taking a bite out of someone and ripping a little bit of the fresh flesh out of that person. Um, you know, wild dogs, bad dogs might do that. You know, they tear away at someone. And when the Greeks came up, and as we think about sarcasm, we think about that happening not literally, but in other ways, with the words that we say, sometimes they're biting words. There are words which are meant to inflict pain. Now, sometimes we joke around with other people and, and there's no problem with that. I, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong at times with that. But we need to be careful with regards to what we say because sometimes what we think is funny hurts other people. What we say injures them. And it's things which not do not bring us together, but things which kind of continue to pull us apart or keep us apart. St. James in his letter writes, you know, out of the mouth comes blessings and curses. He says, brothers, sisters, you know, this is not, this is not how it's to be, not how God has created us. In fact, as we aim for restoration, as we aim to live in peace, what does that mean? It means that we need to be careful about what we say and what we do towards others. I am so glad that God, who had every right to say, this is enough, I'm not going to take it anymore, I'm going to just separate my, my, myself from you, that he didn't do that with humankind. He didn't do it with me. He didn't do it with you. But rather, God got in the game so that we might be restored, so that we might have peace with him now and forever. God so loved the world that he sent his son. Jesus, you know, played that game here on earth, battling sin, death, and the devil, not for a trophy or prestige, but for your salvation and my salvation. And the Holy Spirit continues to, to get in the game, bringing us to faith, but then also helping us now to live as God's people so that we can build up one another. You know, I, I talked about basketball earlier, and if I were to take a basketball and step 30 feet away from uh, the hoop uh, and the net, you might say, and, and take a couple shots, you know, it might take a while before I, I'm able to get this basketball in there. Um, it's hard sometimes as you're shooting baskets, especially the further away you go. But if I were to take this ball and say, could you hit the broadside of a barn with this basketball? Well, if I'm 10 feet away, 30 feet away, or even 40 feet away, it'd actually be pretty easy to do because it's a large target. I want you to think about that as you speak to others and as you interact with others. You know, it's easy to say hurtful things. It's like hitting the broadside of a barn. But at times, to live in peace and aim for restoration, that is harder. I love what St. Paul said right before he said aim for restoration. He said rejoice. Why did he say rejoice? Because as Christians, it's important to remember that our lives are lived in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And it's because we have this relationship with God, which God continues to renew through forgiveness of our sins, that enables us to have joy as, as we live here on earth. It enables us to have peace with him, and it also then enables us to seek to extend that peace to others. And so as we see what's happening in the world, you know, sometimes we have no control over what's happening. I have no control over what's happening in Minneapolis or New York 
I have no control necessarily what's going on in Seattle, although I do pray for those areas. But what I do have control over, what's happening in my family, what's happening in this uh, church community, and also to a greater extent, what's happening in our community here. And my prayer is that what I say and what I do would not be something which pulls people apart, but brings them together. And that is my prayer for you as well. Amen. strength for all the despairing, healing for the ones who dwell in shame. All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. Do not be afraid. What a marvelous Lord is our God. How majestic is his name. We continue to give him thanks and praise through our singing, through our, our words of adoration, 
but also a way that we express our thanks to God is through our gifts, our financial support of, of his work here in this world. We'd like to thank you so very much for your continued support of, of Trinity through your prayers, through connecting other people, and also through your, your offerings. And as you are able, we encourage you to continue to give. And now we continue with our prayers. O blessed and holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hear the prayers of your people. In the beginning, Father, your word spoke all things into being, and from nothing you made all that is. Help us to see the imprint of your love in the goodness of creation and to praise you for it. Also help us to exercise responsible care of all that you have entrusted to us. Throughout the ages, Father, your spirit has been active in this world to carry out your will. In this day and in this time, raise up for your church godly men and women to serve you and others. Help all of your people to give witness to your mercy and love in Jesus Christ. Help us to have peace and patience, self-control and kindness, joy and faithfulness as we interact with others. Almighty God, you work to establish and maintain peace through our government. Bless our president, our governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws so that peace and godly virtue may be in our land. Bless all who defend us in the armed forces, aid us in emergency and medical fields, and inform us with news. Guide and preserve all those who serve in law enforcement and the National Guard. In the hour of trial and in the moment of trouble, you are there, Father. Hear us as we cry to you for the sake of the sick, the troubled in mind, the wounded in heart, and those who grieve. Deliver them from affliction as you will, and sustain them in hope with a patient heart and strength for the day. At this time, we lift up those who are in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, all these things and whatever ask, whatever else we know we need, we ask you to grant us for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. And now we are bold to pray the prayer which Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
thank you for watching this, this online worship service. I pray that you were enriched as well as challenged. Challenged as a child of God to go forth in this world and, and rejoice. Aim for restoration and, and live in peace. I know it's not always easy, but that is what God has called us to do. And in Jesus Christ, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, I know we can do it. If you have any concerns or if we can be of help, please be sure to contact the church office or you can call me on my cell phone. God bless you.